Hey everybody, it's Anna Sabramowitz from eLearner Engaged and here's another video. So, okay, this today was fantastic. I got an email from somebody who's taking one of my, um, one of my courses and the course is, uh, it's free for everybody. It's a nine, uh, nine lesson email course where you sign up and it's free on my site, eLearnerEngaged.com and what happens is over the span of nine days you get these nine lessons and I think it's really cool to, to uh, use this technology to do that and I think people should be doing it more where you get something instantly in your in-mail, in, in-mail box, you can reply. But anyways, the reason I mention it is because um, I always ask people you know, what their goals are, uh, where they are professionally, why they're taking this course and also what, how do they find it. And somebody wrote me this really kind note about how they, they've been following my work for a long time and they really enjoy the candid approach that I have to personal growth and learning. And I thought, that's so cool. Yay. Um, it just made my day. Actually, every time I get an email from somebody who watches something I do or uh, gives me feedback on one of my webinars or whatever, I just, I get really happy about that. It means that you're not alone. So I had a really wonderful meeting with a student from the scenario-based um, scenario e-learning design course. Um, it's e-learning scenario, designing e-learning scenarios course. I think I'm gonna have to come up with like an acronym, but anyways, it's supposed to be, I'm hoping the title is very self-explanatory so nobody has to guess about what the course is about. Kind of like they had to do with skill agents because I don't think most people are like, what is skill agents, why? Anyways, that's my other course. So um, this is kind of cool. I'm not going to give you away any intel on, uh, on our meeting, but really what's happening, this, the company that this instructional designer works for, e-learning is a small part of what they already do as far as training because they are heavily involved in things like they really want to get the learner uh, to hands-on interactions as soon as possible. So the e-learning is used as an introduction uh, portion really to some of the common uh, safety protocols, but then the person quickly moves over to almost like a simulator uh, where they get to practice hands-on and make decisions. And so I love what she said, uh, which was that she wanted to make the e-learning the space um, where people would be introduced to making decisions right away. And I love that. I think that uh, <clears throat> many places use e-learning as still, uh, we're beating this horse, as still as just information sharing instead of making it the place where people are making decisions, um, putting things into their own words, seeing the actions, the consequences of their actions. So, you know, get them used to doing that instead of being passive, uh, passive participants from the very beginning. And the other thing that uh, I thought I'd talk about today because I just, because um, it's really, it's come up and I, I thought it was kind of interesting. So uh, my um, my learning experience newsletter, which is called, I just call it Lex for short because I think it's cool. Uh, it, uh, I think it was last week. I shared a, I shared a really great uh, article and the article is about 10 years old now and it's about smile sheets. And I remember reading it when I was just starting out. <laughs> in getting smile sheets and I think I was just looking for a research and this article came up about how this how smile sheets are not a very uh, effective way to measure success and it's only the first level and how most companies basically a smile sheet is when and I've actually used ones in the places that I've been a trainer where we actually had the face that's actually a smile and you and you you circle the one that close most closely resembles the shape of your mouth and and I thought this is a still a great article and I've got some really contradictory feedback where people were saying I got emails back saying well this should be more this is a 10 year old article can you provide some new updated info on the progress that we've made in the past decade and sadly I could not actually say that we have and I'm not saying that because I want to, because yeah, I want to be uh, cynical about her progress. 
but it's simply the experience that I've had. And that was like on a query that I made about assessment strategies of this place. And this was just a month ago and they're using smile sheets and they're not even using sophisticated smile sheets. They're using, are you happy with this smile sheets? And so what I wanted to bring to your attention is this book. It's called Performance Focused Smile Sheets by Will Talheimer, A Radical Rethinking of a Dangerous Art Form. And to tell you the truth, I read this book and it completely re, like re-energized me. It gave me just some hope because I think for the longest time I was just pushing for next level evaluation, pushing for, you know, let's, let's see business impact. And I realize now that through the, you, you have to read this book, through the learning that I've done in the, uh, through Will's book, I realized that as, I mean, this is, this has always been the struggle when you're in a training department, sometimes you don't have influence over that bottom line metric, which, uh, Kathy Moore brings up all the time. Right. And I realize now that that metric, the, the big picture metric, like how am I going to, you know, what kind of return on investment will the business see as a result of this intervention that I'm, uh, proposing that that is simply not simply, but in most cases, it's a beacon for you to continue your work and not to get distracted with minutia because you're trying to, in the end, impact something meaningful. However, you may never get to see the financial statement that proves that your intervention was helpful. But also, focusing on that, it, it may almost have this uh, weird kind of, you might get delusional into thinking that whatever you're doing, actually that single event has that impact instead of, uh, building in from the very beginning, several, several, let's say, let's call it lattice work or expectations of how other people are going to help you, how other departments or the environment is going to be set up to help you succeed. So the, the, the optimal setup would be to have, figure out what is the big, big, big business metric that you're trying to impact. However, at the same time, realize that it is your smiley sheets and the development of those smiley sheets in the right way that can actually give you the kind of metrics that you need to improve your, uh, to improve your, um, your interventions here. Let me just read a little bit here. So, okay. Uh, first and foremost, smile sheets are based on subjective inputs of learners and subjective assessments made by human beings are often flawed. So this does not mean that subjective judgments can't have value. They can, but before we look to smile sheet results as gospel, we must recognize the problems inherent in subjective opinions. Then we must minimize the deleterious effects of such weaknesses. Finally, when we're looking at smile sheet results, we must view and reconcile the results in light of the weaknesses inherent in subjective inputs. The ideas in this book will help us minimize the subjectivity penalty, but will not eliminate it. And the book goes on, gives you super practical examples of how to restructure your smile sheets to make them meaningful metrics for you as the designer of something like a job aid, like e-learning, like training, like face-to-face sessions, like webinars, whatever it is. I remember uh, when I was just starting out, I was working with a couple of these senior trainers. I'd say, you know, if you want to influence the results of your smile sheets, what you want to do is save the best cookies for last and give them during the last break so that people, people are happy. And make sure that the last day has a great lunch. And yeah, it's true. It, and so what's scary is that your, um, your, it, and, and then your, uh, your training can be so easily influenced. I mean, I mean, mostly physical, right? Can be so easily influenced by, let's say, what you put in that environment. 
However, my other trainer who was my mentor when I, when I first started, she said, one of the things that I want people to do and be is uncomfortable when they leave my training. I don't want them to feel super confident. I want them to actually be anxious because the goal is for them to realize that they're just, they're new at something and they still need to learn more to practice it because that training is never, ever enough. It's like, you know, we took a, a day course on negotiation. There's no way I walked out of that course thinking, yeah, no, I was, I was afraid because I thought I, I really don't have the skills to, to be able to do this, right? I just, I just got the primer on it. So I didn't understand that in that moment until I realized that the people who maybe were the most uh, anxious during my courses were the ones who, or who left not having the super ease, knew that they needed to learn and practice more, that I was only providing them with, with the, the base, the, the cover, and that um, they needed to do more work to be masters or to, to be uh, really good at their jobs. So yeah, that was my, my thoughts for today. Oh yeah, and today I just want to share with you, this is my, this is my sweater from Ireland. My mom got it. We went to see my, um, we're not Irish, we're Polish, but my grandpa was in Ireland and we went to Glendalo, I think. It's this beautiful ancient cemetery site and they had these sweaters there by the side and uh, that was the last trip we had with grandpa because he's gone now, but uh, she lent it to me because she, she likes to do that. So I'm wearing it today and maybe she'll see it. And I think green looks pretty good on me. It's super oversized, it's, uh, but it's cozy and uh, it reminds me of that trip. So I just thought I'd, you know, random fact. <laughs> um, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.